Hello everyone, my name is NBZ, and welcome to Game Take. So I've been ruminating for a while, thinking, what's the next step, what do I do on this YouTube thing? Um, and, you know, I'm someone who is interested in the games media and the, and the news and all that stuff, and I thought that it would be an interesting thing to potentially perhaps, one might say, do a new show. And so uh, I've concocted an idea. It's called Game Take. Uh, it's basically me choosing three news stories from the week where I find particular interest and talking about them. Because I think a lot of the problem with news shows on, on video games is people feel obligated to cover the biggest things, the most, you know, mainstream things that everyone's talking about. And I like that to some degree. But if you're not vibing with the person, uh, you don't really care then you're not really going to get much out of it. So I'm going to put my personality into this. I'm going to choose three things every week uh, from the video game news that particularly spiked my interest. Uh, they may not be big, uh, but uh, I think that they are interesting. And I want to discuss my opinions. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So let's kick it off. So the first story this week pertains to Fire Emblem Heroes, the mobile game that was announced uh, last week, maybe two weeks ago, in the Fire Emblem Direct, where they said, hey, by the way, we're going to do this popularity contest where you go and you vote for your favorite Fire Emblem characters. And I was like, man, that sounds more fun than the mobile game does. So they have released rankings for the top voted male and female characters at the moment, which on the one hand, I really don't like because it means that people, if they see someone who's in second, the, the rest of their votes, they're just going to vote for that person. And look, you know, I get it. I understand that you want this person to be the number one. But for me, it's all about, you know, variety. Variety is the spice of life. You've got to choose different characters every day. I don't want to look at my rankings of 13 days and be like, Tharja, 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 you know? You know what I'm saying? I mean, no worries if you want Tharja all, all day, but it's not my thing. Uh, so uh, let's have a look and, and take a look at who are the top uh, characters in all these. So uh, in the female one, we have Lynn leading, uh, Lucina in second, Tharja in third, and then a bunch of um, lords and, and fates and awakening characters. It seems the ladies are dominated uh, by a lot of newer games, uh, although I'm very happy to see Lynn at the top, uh, which makes me think that there are a lot of old school Fire Emblem fans coming in here and uh, trying to give a push, because I think as much as I don't really care about this whole thing, a lot of people are divided on the waifu versus the non-waifu, right? It's like, the modern era of Fire Emblem, or oh, the waifus. The old Fire Emblem, nah, they're just legit people, right? And so, uh, I think that there is this clash going on where old people are like, no, nah, fuck these waifus, I want Lin. Um, which is respectable, I think Lin's a great character. Uh, but it's just interesting to me that there is this weird, like, schism, one might say. On the male side, it seems very kind of Smash dominated. Uh, we've got Ike at number one. Roy at number two, Hector at number three, and then a lot of lords, just lords all day. Uh, and of course, I'm really pulling for Hector. Hector's my man, I want him to do well. Uh, but Ike makes sense. Um, Roy, if people had actually played Blazing Blade, I don't think, or should I say Binding Blade, I don't think anyone would be voting for him because as we all know, Roy's not, it's not very good. Uh, so, uh, God, it's, this is a really interesting thing to put out there because uh, it shows the bias towards the characters that everyone knows from Smash Brothers. It shows that everyone cares about the more modern characters, and that is obvious, right? Because those are the games that most people have played. Awakening is what blew this franchise up. Um, but I hope we get some cool stuff coming out of this, because they said they're going to do a calendar uh, on the top 10 for both male and female. So that's fun, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. But uh, look, you've got a couple days left. Throw all your votes uh, to whoever you want. I'm not going to tell you anymore. You know, if you did Hector once, that's fine. But, you know, vote your conscience. Do what you want. So the next story is about Square Enix and Marvel. They're uh, getting in bed together, having a bit of a conversation going on about what they want to do in the video game space. So there was a trailer released, which uh, essentially shows, you know, hey, we're doing Avengers. Uh, it's going to involve Crystal Dynamics. It's going to involve Eidos Montreal. We're all on board. We've got a multi-game partnership. Everything is, is looking up. Uh, it seems, and I think this is a very interesting approach, right, because you look at studios like uh, Eidos Montreal and, and uh, Crystal Dynamics, very uh, well regarded, they make great games, you know, Deus Ex and Tomb Raider, I for one absolutely love the new Tomb Raider games, um, and Crystal have done a fantastic job with those, so on one degree I'm kind of like a little sad, because I'm like, man, there was that leak about Shadow of the Tomb Raider and it not necessarily being made by Crystal, I don't know how a sequel would feel if it wasn't developed by them, but... 
I hope that it's in good hands, and this is interesting, but it depends on what kind of a game it is, right? I imagine an, an Avengers game, you may be playing as multiple characters. That's kind of different, you know? It's not really uh, one single progression. It could be a third person behind the back camera action adventure. That would be fantastic, but then you think about it, a lot of these characters have superpowers, right? So how can you control that? And I think it's, it's an interesting thought experiment to be like, how can we make a kind of traditional Uncharted style, Tomb Raider style game which retains the Marvel Universe in a way that is believable but also restrains these characters without going crazy? Because, you know, you start to think, oh, let's go open world because, you know, Iron Man can fly anywhere or uh, let's go action game because Thor can fucking smash people with his hammer. And uh, I, I really don't know the direction they're going to take with this, but it's really interesting. And I think that um, these studios are really good. I think most of all, it's interesting that Marvel are taking the approach of trying to crush everyone at this point. Like, they've beaten DC on the movie front, they're doing really well on the TV front, those Netflix shows are amazing, and now they want to conquer video games. And the one thing you can say about Marvel is those video games have not been great. Uh, DC, especially with the Arkham series, uh, with what Warner Brothers has done with that, is a cut above. I mean, most other franchise games generally, like the Arkham series is, but it's better than anything Marvel uh, has done in the video game space. So I think it's very interesting that they're now kind of targeting studios. They're doing the partnership with Sony for the Spider-Man game, um, and now they're doing this with Square Enix. And I think uh, before in the past, they were like, hey, let's hand it off to Activision. Let's let them do their thing. And uh, that doesn't seem to be cutting it anymore. Uh, we need good video games made by really good studios, and this is going to be a good video game made by a really good studio. So I'm optimistic. Not going to hear anything until 2018, but... Uh, some cool news. And finally, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Ooh, baby. So tasty. Uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about Zelda probably after launch because there's little snippets, little tits of information that come out that, uh, you know, may not get show on our podcast because we have a lot of broader issues to talk about. But uh, here's a little news story. Uh, it comes from a French website who interviewed Eiji Anuma. Uh, and they kind of went through uh, some different questions. Anuma talks about there being over 100 shrines. There was also a leak of a player's guidebook, which told us that there were... Um, this is maybe considered spoilers, so I'm going to hold up my finger. And you can turn the volume down if you don't want to hear this. So, spoilers. Uh, there's going to be 120 shrines over 900 Korok seed puzzles, which I imagine just means finding the Korok seeds, and that's a puzzle. I'm not sure. If it says puzzle. I think it just means going around the environment. And um, 76 side quests, or something thereabouts. So there's a lot of content in this game. Um, so with that in mind, he has been kind of talking about the dungeons themselves and the shrines. And what he said is that they're not necessarily going to have a different theme dependent on uh, you know, where you enter them from. So like the forest dungeon in Ocarina of Time, obviously, you know, you've got leaves and grass and everything around this dungeon. Um, the shrines themselves are seemingly going to look the same no matter where you enter them from. So if you go to the desert and you enter a shrine, it's going to have that technological blue shit everywhere, you know, from what we've seen from E3 and other demos uh, leading up to launch. Um, so I was a little bit taken aback by this because I think one of the fundamental aspects of Zelda that's really cool is that theming, that ability to take an area and craft, uh, you know, some puzzles around it and make it more environmental and interesting. And I think maybe boiling it down to this stuff is perhaps a step back to some degree. But he d does mention that there are obviously, you know, there are main dungeons still. And those dungeons, I believe the rumor is there's going to be four of them. I'm not sure how thematic those are going to be, because I believe he was only talking about shrines here. And I, I do hope that despite the shrines kind of being uh, a straight palette the, the entire way through, I think that dungeons could be more interesting if they had something thematic surrounding them. And there are rumors as to what the dungeons are and how they work. I'm not going to go into that here because you can look that up online, but uh, it's exciting. It, it just worries me from what I've, I've seen of rumors is I'm not sure whether these dungeons will be that strongly themed. So, I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm really glad they're breaking with convention, but they are also maybe taking some things away that people really liked and think are a core part of Zelda. So, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, let me know your thoughts on all these stories below, and uh, I'll see you again next time with some more game takes. Cheers, guys.